Thank you, John, for the introduction. I'm recognizing stuff from my NCAR uh, staff bio. So uh, very glad to be here. Thank you for coming out despite the snow, and especially glad to be back in Boulder after leaving after graduate school 28 years ago. So I'll tell you about this uh, NCAR sizzle plan for science at scale. Uh, I want to stress that it's a draft, so I'm going to welcome comments. We have, in fact, just sent the draft to our NSF program managers, and we'll get their comments. But um, I'd like to acknowledge a number of people who have provided some kind of feedback, either in writing or just in conversation, and I've probably missed a few, so I apologize if not, but it, this has been looked at by, by some people, uh, and I, I really appreciate that input. So my purpose here is, I guess, three purposes, really. Summarize the key elements of the plan, uh, maybe encourage you to, to read it for more detail. Uh, invite any questions or feedback or concerns you might have. I'm hoping to be done with you know, at least 15 to 20 minutes left for any uh, open discussion. And then seek uh, interested participants or stakeholders. Like if you're interested in helping to work on this or you have some data that you would like to see included or something like that, um, let's, let's talk about that. So science at scale, what do I mean here? And this definition is in the document, uh, and I kind of invented it, the, the, this wording. But um, it, the ability to perform scientific analysis on big data without being constrained by storage capacity, processing power, network bandwidth, unfamiliar data formats, or insufficient software tools. And when I say big data, I'm sort of using the traditional definitions of things like volume, huge numerical model outputs, which really means we want to bring the computing to the data and try to avoid moving the data around. Uh, variety, large numbers of disparate data sets from multiple sources, and velocity, like if we want to do rapid processing of observational data streams or, or model outputs as they're being generated. So with some definitions out of the way, um, you know, we already have a really good capacity to, to handle data at the NCAR Wyoming Supercomputer Center. You might have seen this uh, canonical diagram before. I, I tweaked a little bit of the text on it, but you know we've got Cheyenne, we've got Casper, we've got Glade, Campaign Store, uh, HPSS, these science gateways, Globus, Grid FTP, people can log in remotely, they can download data. That's all really great. And if you sort of you know take out a couple elements and sort of boil it down to maybe the, the two primary analysis things, right? We've got the Casper DAV cluster and Glade, and then of course some data on tape. And um, this, is, this is great. I mean, we have compute and storage co-located, so that's exactly what you want. You don't really have to move the data around. Uh, the network is fast. The CPU is very fast. You can run your own custom analysis code, Fortran, whatever you want. Uh, you got access to IDL, MATLAB, Vapor, NCL, and all that on Casper. So that's really good. We can, we can do a lot with that. But I think there are some, some challenges. Um, you know, people need to write a lot of custom code to import individual data sets, you know, get the specific files, uh, you know, maybe convert formats, units, uh, names of variables, whatever. Um, there are definitely some analysis functions, but I think there's not a lot of pre-built analysis tools that kind of easily do something for you that is routine. People are sort of, I suspect, um, rewriting similar kinds of code to do similar analyses. Um, you might have to submit your job for, to a queue and wait for it to be done. Uh, Glade is great, it's very fast, but it's also pricey and it's probably faster than needed for uh, certain types of analyses. You know, after the model run, you just want to look at the data. You don't necessarily need all of that performance. Um, the data is in a file system, so people just kind of put data in whatever directories they want, and now you've got to sort of rummage around and, and, and get to the data. Um, there could be multiple copies of the same data. So several people want to look at something, they read it off tape, they copied it on Glade, now we've got you know, two, three, four, five copies of the same files uh, sitting on Glade. I believe that that's uh, something that happens. Um, and then of course you've got quotas, your data might get purged after a time, you've got to keep on top of that. Um, and then if you do want to get it off tape, you've got to wait for a bit, you know, tape retrieval uh, delay. And uh, um, if you are not from NCAR or you don't have an NSF grant, you can't actually use this, right? You can't remote log in and, and use our stuff unless you have got the special permission. So you've got to download the data instead, but then you need enough network and bandwidth and enough place to store it at your location. So um, those are some challenges in the data analysis realm. In the sort of um, science gateway or data repository realm, you know, we also have some, some other maybe lower level challenges. We've got separate repositories with different software. It might be nice to converge those someday. And um, We've got Dash Search, which is great. It'll let you search for any NCAR data, but it finds data at the collection level, not at the individual uh, file level for your specific you know, time, parameter, uh, region of interest, whatever. So some challenges that uh, we might be able to address. And I think we have an opportunity now to address some of those challenges and even a mandate uh, as requested by, by NSF. 
So we're trying to address that with this plan for, for science at scale, which was under development at the request of the sizzle director, my boss, thank you, Anka, uh, and, and, and our NSF program managers. So it's currently a draft, as, as I've said, version 0 0.4.7, thanks again to people who commented. And what this plan does is propose some enhancements to sizzle infrastructure and activities in support of science by NCAR and external communities. And there's also stuff in the plan about just continuing and improving the stuff we're already doing in the uh, data management activities, especially in my division, the Information Systems Division. So what's in the plan? Well, this is what's not in the plan. It's not about the earth on fire floating next to a laptop in a hyperspace tunnel full of numbers. And <laughs> I put this, I thought it was humorous, because this is actually, this is titled Conceptual Design Using Cloud Computing to Process Near Real-Time Streaming Data, to inter, to, which illustrated a solicitation, an NSF Internet 2 solicitation on exploring clouds for acceleration of science. So very fanciful, but not very descriptive of what is actually, you know, we need to actually do. So we need a more actionable concept. So I'm not a graphic artist. My initial high-level diagram is much more crude, but here it is. Um, Imagine you have uh, NCAR or, or NSF funded users. They can connect to NCAR. They can use some nice analysis tools, which we've deployed. They compute on, on our computing infrastructure. And they're able to look at some analysis ready data. And I'll say a little bit later what I mean by analysis ready. And then some of that data we maybe copy to the public cloud. And I say some because it costs money to put data in the cloud. So we might put, not be able to put all of our data there, right? But at least some key, high value, high interest data sets in the cloud where you can use all the cloud computing resources sources and ideally the same kind of suite of analysis tools if you're from the outside you know public industry uh, international whatever so that's the very high level concept and now I want to kind of drill into that a little bit um, the document itself is written kind of like a, a project plan or a strategic plan there's a vision statement and then there's several goals that need to be met to uh, attain that vision and then each goal has several objectives and then each objective has a bunch of tasks and uh, those tasks are actually now moved to a separate uh, document, more like a you know, Gantt chart or something like that, uh, work breakdown structure, and needs actually a lot of um, uh, fleshing out in terms of dates and costs and specific tasks. But anyways, we're working on that. And the document also talks about you know, some desired outcomes, initial data sets we might look at, the development approach, and a few words, but no real numbers on, on budgetary needs. So that's how the document is organized. Uh, the vision statement is, currently, uh, Sizzle enables science at scale on large and diverse NCAR data sets in support of research and societal needs. So it's written in the present tense because that's what you're supposed to do with vision statements, supposedly. But we're not quite there yet. I mean, we're partly there, certainly. But uh, this would ho help us go farther. And then to meet that vision, uh, there's five goals in the document. Uh, the science and collaboration goal says NCAR community science is supported and enhanced by Sizzle's hardware and software deployments. Data storage goal, NCAR is able to control data storage costs with appropriate performance for different usage scenarios. The data analytics goal says that users both at NCAR and externally can compute directly on large volume data using either pre-built tools or their own code. Data discovery and access, users are able to find NCAR hosted data at a fine level of granularity and standardized formats and services are available. And then finally, the data management goal, NCAR scientists can readily comply with requirements for open data, and Sizzle can streamline data archiving and curation. So each of those uh, goals has several objectives under it in the document, and I'm going to highlight just some of the, the key ones. Um, so uh, key one here is use cases. Um, you know, what, which data sets do we want to look at first? Can we think of a use case that says, if I had this huge data set and some nice analysis tools, I could get a new result. I could do some science that I can't currently do. And like to, you know, look at some of those to help us decide what data sets to, that we might want to work on first. Uh, NCAR collaboration. So having Sizzle here in the, in the middle be really uh, supporting, as it, as it does, but even more so, the science of all the other uh, NCAR labs and working together on on what they might need in terms of, of computing resources or, or data approaches. And then external partnerships, both for potential users of data, uh, represented here by the little local government building and the world and you know people with ties on and stuff like that, and you know other scientists, um, you know people who might want to use the data. What are their use cases? What would they like to do that they can't do now with our data? But then also a lot of um, 
external partnerships because there's many people working in this area. Different groups are writing uh, open source code or are struggling with the issues of big geospatial data and um, trying to work with it. So I think we can uh, collaborate with these and leverage a lot of their work and their best practices. Uh, so possible initial data sets. The document lists a few, few more than what's here. I just put a few on the slide, but you know, we'd like to develop some use cases that look at the cost benefit of working on various data sets. Because if we're going to put you know, petabytes of data, say, in the public cloud, because we think somebody wants it, we want to be sure that, that people actually would be using it. But uh, you know, CMEP6, CESM would be uh, kind of obvious candidates. I'm interested in this idea of a deep subset. So all of the data that we can find for a specific event or a specific you know, month or year, is there any, you know, from any source, not just NCAR, is there some kind of new science that comes out of that? Um, I know Matt Long, CGD, very interested in some oceanography data, maybe supporting things like GRIT or CRME, uh, the NCAR research data, archive research analysis data sets, regional climate data, others. So there's a bunch of stuff we could do. It'd be great to have like one data set at least per NCAR lab that was in a sort of initial round of, of stuff that we worked on. And I'd love you know, input on potential other initial data sets. Uh, so OK, the data storage goal, key objectives. So one is uh, the idea of um, purchasing and installing locally an object store, which is a different type of storage that we currently use. And if we want to get into some detail, I have a sort of backup slide that we can, we can look at. But this could um, be a, an adjunct or even a replacement for campaign storage someday. I think we should, should really uh, look at that. Um, it could be a place where we put the RDA, the CGG, the Dash repository holdings, even the, the EOL and HAO data archive holdings, because those are data that you don't necessarily need the very high performance access to. You just want to be sure they're really, they are accessible, but then they're safe and protected and, and durable and so forth. So we could migrate all those data repository holdings to this object store. And then uh, putting in some data that we've kind of prepped in some way to make it more uh, analysis ready. So that's one objective. Another one is, uh, as I've alluded to before, putting at least some of the data into a cloud common, so a public cloud object store, so some appropriate subset. And then optimizing. So what do we mean? You know, we've got data in a bunch of different formats, uh, might be organized in various ways, might be these really huge files that are hard to work with. So um, some data sets, at least, might, need, might benefit from things like conversion to a standard format, such as NetCDF, or slicing and dicing in a different way as, as you move it into these uh, data commons or cloud commons, or writing code using a library like Intake, which deals with the plumbing between the analysis code and the data, so you don't have to anymore. You, know, you can just say, hey, show me you know, sea surface temperature for yesterday, and it gets it. You don't have to be looking at specific file paths and directories and stuff like that. So, Different data sets would need different optimization, but um, it would be good to look at that and to, um, I guess what I'm thinking of it is saying, look, this is what the data in these data commons will look like. And you don't get to put your data, or at least in this part of it, in the analysis ready part, unless certain things have been done. Um, there might be other storage where it's a little bit more random and it's sort of your area, you can do what you want, but I'd love to have a, a suite of data that's really uh, analysis ready and optimized. OK, we, why do we want to do this? Because we want to analyze the data. So what are some of the key objectives? Um, we'd like to deploy some analysis and visualization tools. So we've already started working, people at NCAR have already started working with this thing called Pangeo, which i got another slide on in a minute, um, and uh, Jupyter, Jupyter Notebooks as a sort of front end to manipulate your data. You know, we've long had NCL, NCAR command language, now getting wrapped with uh, Python to make this pingle. Um, there's this whole suite of libraries, really, underneath the rubric of PyViz, Python visualization, tools like GeoViews and Matplotlib and others that we might be able to deploy or, or make available or, or, or build uh, you know, analysis workflows with. Um, and then speaking of workflows, you, know, so you want to do some interactive work, that's great, but you might want to also prepackage into a well-defined workflow something that uh, either repeats an analysis you want to do on different data or that encapsulates what you did for a paper so that uh, you can sort of have reproducible science and reference that workflow and, and people can look at your work and, 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 and try to reproduce it. Um, so those are two objectives. And then where would some of this stuff run? Well, one possibility is an NCAR cloud. So this would be like a private cloud, maybe a different type of hardware that we've currently had that would supplement what we do. Uh, could support things like uh, small runs that don't really need the whole power of Cheyenne. 
um, a place where you do data analysis and visualization. So maybe it's, it's the new Casper or a supplement to Casper. Um, and lets us experiment with cloud technologies, things like using containers, Docker containers, or Dask for scheduling, or bursting out to the cloud, or, or cost models and, and reducing costs before we, figuring out how to get the minimum cost before we move things to the public cloud. So there's a number of things we could do if we had our own uh, private cloud here. And then, of course, the public cloud. So as I've said, to enable uh, external users, let them do data analysis and visualization, let us, if we want to, for whatever reason, use the public cloud. And then also bring, bring your own code. Let people run Docker containers of whatever they want, which we don't necessarily want them to do our, on our own infrastructure, just for security reasons. But if it's in the cloud, hey, whatever, do whatever. You know, bring, your, bring your code. So those are the key uh, data analytics objectives. And, uh, I feel like I'm going faster than in my dry run, so we'll have plenty of time for questions. So Pangeo, uh, I, I want to show a slide about that in case you haven't heard about it. Um, this is, slide was borrowed from Ryan Abernathy at, at Columbia, but it, it kind of harkens back to some of the things I've already said. You know, the idea is you have some distributed storage, you put analysis-ready data on it, you've got a cloud or HPC system with things like Dask to schedule your, to sort of distribute and schedule your analysis and an X-Array where you've a nice data model with uh, you know, appropriate slicing and dicing of your, of your data. And then Jupyter, uh, that, which runs in a web browser as the front end. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks, I don't know if you've used them, but basically you can find text and code, and you push the button and the code runs, and it generates the image or the results or whatever. And you can tweak things a little bit and rerun it, and then you can publish that notebook as, a, as an artifact. So um, Pangeo is not a piece of software. It's a project that's using a bunch of other uh, existing open source software and trying to unite it in a way that really enables geospatial data analysis. And in fact, um, the, the PI for Pangeo is, is here at NCAR, uh, Kevin Paul. I don't know if Kevin is, is here, but Kevin, uh, Ryan May, uh, Davide Devanto, and Joe Hammond are all PIs or co-PIs on the, the NSF award for, for Pangeo. So, and there's other people at NCAR who are also, who are also using uh, Pangeo. So there's a lot of momentum behind it in the community. That's why I'm thinking this would be a good thing to try. And if it turns out it's not a good thing, well, we can just take it out. It's just a kind of a layer in the architecture. Rip it out and put in you know, the next best thing if, if something comes along. All right, the data discovery and access goal. So some key objectives. Um, we definitely want to continue what we have now in the Dash search arena. This is the sort of catalog of NCAR data. Um, already, some of our stuff is visible in this new Google data set search, which is using Google as a search engine, but having Google recognize, hey, this is a data set, not a you know, web page of something for sale or whatever. Um, and so you know, finishing all that hookup, so Google data set search will find all of our data. That's a, that would be a good thing. Um, but then, as I said, that's sort of at the collection level. So maybe there's a more detailed level. No, I, there's definitely a more detailed level. If we're starting to send you know, millions of objects into an object store, um, we want a very detailed inventory of that. So for every object, you know, you know what's the time coverage? What's the spatial coverage? What's the parameter in there? What was the model run? What's the ensemble member, et cetera? And a way that you can query those, either through a human user interface, but especially so that your code can find the stuff you need, um, or the, the intake code that we maybe helped write for you, uh, find the data you need and just bring it into your, your analysis. Uh, we still want to let people download data or subsets of data. And so it would be great to continue and expand our offerings in the sort of arena of standard data access services like the Threads data server from Unidata based on OpenDAP, uh, Open Geospatial Consortium web services. If we put stuff in the cloud or even in our own private uh, object store, uh, it, it would be available through what's called the S3 API. That's something invented by Amazon Web Services but is generally used. And then we, we currently offer and presumably would continue to offer the, uh, the Globus access. And then in the data management goal, this is the last, last goal, um, several objectives. One is continuing our data stewardship activities. So we're trying to get uh, core trust seal certification for our data repositories, which shows that they are you know, um, uh, durable, viable, well-curated repositories. Uh, continuing to assign digital object identifiers, permanent IDs to data sets, so that if you use some data in a paper, you can cite it, just like you might cite another actual paper. Uh, helping people write uh, metadata, the ISO metadata in XML format. So we're, we're doing that now, and we want to you know, continue doing it and, and expand that. Um, 
providing data management plan support. So as you may know, when you write a grant to NSF or somewhere else, you, now you need to have a data management plan in there. And people you know, are sort of writing them from scratch, but we're, we're working on ways to do better so we can uh, pre-arrange which repository will take your data. And maybe even if there's going to be a cost, how much that is. So you can just sort of put that in your plan. And, and we, as a repository, know in advance, oh, we better expect you know, a petabyte of data in two years. Or, and, and you know already and can tell NSF that it's, it's going to be protected and you've got a good plan, so please fund me. Thank you. And uh, finally, continuing our support for archival repositories, RDA, CDG, dash repo are kind of operated by Sizzle, and then you got EOL and HAO repositories, and as I said, maybe moving those to a different type of uh, storage architecture. So if I kind of put all this together on one uh, component diagram, this is what, this is what I get. Uh, you know, in light blue, we've got these analysis tools like Jupyter, Pangeo, Pingel, and so forth. Maybe ways to do workflows, uh, interactive visualization tools like from the vast uh, group here. Um, we've got uh, ways in green to find data and access data. We've got computing nodes. You see the mouse? Yeah, OK. Uh, computing nodes here and this other, other blue, including perhaps an NCAR cloud. And then for storage resources like Glade or maybe HPSS um, or whatever their successors are in the next uh, acquisition for NWSC3. But then this other data commons based on object storage with all the uh, archival type data and then this optimized analysis ready data. And then again, copying some of the data into a cloud commons. Um, again, having a very detailed object inventory of both same types of analysis tools, but the ability to bring your own code and do whatever analysis you want. Um, maybe a little bit more architecturally looking at this, um, starting at the lower left, you know, we've got data sources like our models, our observations, we've got some fast ethernet, put stuff into our local data commons, um, potentially do a bulk copy of some of the data into the cloud. By that I mean, uh, you know, you can actually sort of borrow an appliance from Amazon or Google or whatever, you plug it into your, your computer, you fill it up, you send, give it to FedEx and send it back to Amazon or Google and then they, they put it in there. That's often faster if you have a huge amount of data. In fact, if you really have a huge amount of data, you can have a truck pull up and plug into your data center. It's called, um, uh, let's see, Amazon uh, Snowmobile. So Snowball is the box, they send you Snowmobile is the, you know, tractor trailer thing, literally, I'm, I'm not kidding. Some people do this. So we might not be there, but it's possible. But then, you know, however you send data there initially, um, you might want to keep sending data back and forth. You can do it over the regular network. You can also procure a leased line that um, maximizes speed and minimizes cost of kind of ongoing back and forth transfer. I think this could be important, especially if we need to burst out to the cloud. Like if we need to, you know, uh, realize, oh boy, Cheyenne is oversubscribed. I want to do my computation in the cloud, but first I need this data sent there just temporarily. So we've got a nice lease line. We just push it all out there. You do your analysis, and then we can delete it, and you because we have our main copy uh, here locally. And so lease line is an approach. Um, <clears throat> this inventory database that really knows what it has been sent here, some way to search and query it. This, the S3 API is what you'd use for access. So all your analysis functions can you know, access the data, find what you need to access it, and then at the sort of top end layer here, you can use Jupyter Notebooks for interactively working with your data, uh, make these pre-built uh, workflows to repeat stuff, maybe do batch mode things, and maybe even web pages for non-expert users. So, you know, not everybody wants to look at, you know, Python or Fortran or whatever and modify code to have a slightly different view of the, of the analysis, but they, for certain types of analyses or results or visualizations, we could imagine a, a, a pre-built web page where maybe the user gets to change things like, you know, the date, zoom in, whatever, the name of the parameter, uh, but they can do sort of basic analyses of certain types of data. Okay, so development approach. Um, we definitely want to leverage all the open source code that's out there. There's just tons and tons of it there, and with big uh, momentum behind it, a lot of people working on things. So, uh, you know, this is listing some of, the, some of the groups, but it's not an exhaustive list. So, you know, collaboration with these other kinds of groups can be really important. And, you know, the flip side of that is writing as little custom code as possible. Focusing just on the plumbing to connect components and intake data from, uh, and, and connect to NCAR produced data sets, whatever peculi peculiarities that data set might have. Okay, let's sort of encode that and then make that little intake library module accessible to whoever wants that data set. So nobody ever again has to write you know, the detailed code just to get that one data set. 
So, you know, personally, I'd want to scrutinize any attempt to write something from, from scratch, you know, have as a sort of performance metric, uh, you know, amount of stuff you did uh, divided by the number of lines of code you wrote to do that, right? So the more lines, the lower the, the metric is. Um, I don't, don't quite know how to quantize that, but conceptually. And then when we do write code, because, we, you know, admittedly, some stuff we are going to have to do. Not everybody has done everything. We need to contribute it back to the community, back to these groups in that top bullet there. We have NCAR GitHub repository, so, you know, let's keep putting code there and, and, uh, and building, our, building the community of software. Uh, schedule and funding, the specific schedule and funding not defined yet, but definitely from the scheduling point of view, we want to start small now in, in 2019 and just evolve over time uh, based on you know available time, interest, resources, funding, etc. Uh, but essentially have an incremental path forward from our, our current architecture. Start small and, and add to that. Um, doing everything in this plan would certainly require additional funding and you know, m more than we have currently identified. But NSF has asked us for some shovel-ready, shovel quote-unquote, elements for new funding. So you know, we tell them, oh, if only we had you know, this much dollar, these many hundreds of Ks or whatever, then we could do this thing that we can't otherwise do. So some of the objectives will include a cost estimation task uh, to kind of nail down a little bit what the, what the needed resources are. And you know maybe we'll w write proposals, but there, we might have other ways of getting funding either from NSF or maybe elsewhere. I'm not sure. Um, but some things can definitely be started with existing resources. So we could put modest amounts of data in the cloud right now and start doing some development and testing. We're already running Pangeo uh, locally on Cheyenne, so we can you know keep doing that kind of stuff. And in fact, we've been approached by both Amazon Web Services and uh, Google Cloud Platform to host some of our data for free, data that that they think will be of interest to others as well. And they're basically, they'd say they'd host the data for free, and they're hoping that people would pay for compute time, external people would pay for compute time to actually analyze the data. So uh, both of those uh, uh, groups are, we want to talk to both of those groups more. So desired outcomes. It would be great to have actual new scientific discoveries, right? That would be sort of the holy grail of this, and that would be great. I don't know if we'll get there. I think certainly some of these other objectives, like increased use of NCAR data for various purposes, definitely possible. Uh, increased citation of NCAR data, like formal citation in papers and recognition of our data as a national asset uh, uh, could happen. You know, NCAR is to some extent a, an institution that turns NSF money into data. And the, those data are really important and uh, can be recognized as a, as a national asset if they are broadly accessible. Um, certainly improved capability to analyze big data. I mean, that's kind of one of the main points here. Ideally, a reduction in the cost or maintenance of uh, maintenance cost of our data systems uh, through different types of storage technology. Um, how about employee recognition for good data management? So if you write a paper, that looks good. You know, end of year review. Oh, you wrote a paper, good. Uh, what if you published a data set? What if you made a nice data set, well curated, well documented, made that available to the community, gave it a digital object identifier? You should get recognized for that in your in your performance review at the end of year. It's very important. Um, improved consistency in data-related data proposals to NSF. So if there's sort of an infrastructure of, of data-related stuff that any NCAR proposal can rely on, it doesn't have to include you know, new tasks, new budget items, new hardware purchases, whatever, in individual proposals, uh, that's, that's good for consistency, and I think it would make NSF happy. Um, and then finally, easier compliance with open data requirements. So NSF, the funding agencies, the publishers all say, your data have to be made openly available. So how do you do that? Well, you deposit it in, a, in, a, deposit it in an approved repository. And we want to uh, do that as we're starting to do now, but also make it a little bit easier and streamlined and kind of automated for, for that kind of stuff. So um, this is the last official slide, 1030. OK, shaved a few minutes. Um, uh, now we can have some discussion. Uh, I said I wanted to do three things. Summarize the key elements of the plan, uh, which I've done. You can get to it at this URL on, on NCAR Google Drive. I shortened it up for your convenience there. Um, it got sent, sent uh, yesterday afternoon, I think, Anka, right, to uh, program managers for comment, that being Sarah and Shri. Um, it's definitely expected to evolve. So this, it's not something cast in stone. I want feedback now, but also as we try stuff, we might, might realize, ooh, bad idea, or here's something else we should do. So definitely expect to evolve. Um, I'd really like to get your questions, your feedback, your concerns. Are we on the right track? At least is the concept good? Is there anything that's fundamentally wrong? Is there something that's great? Um, and is there stuff that's missing, challenges that maybe we're not addressing? And then finally, 
love to get interested participants and stakeholders, like people who you know, are interested in using cloud computing, people who want to test something we did, who have data sets they'd like us to include uh, with some specific requirements. So we definitely have some time for questions now, um, but if you want to kind of set up a time to talk with me at some later time, that's my contact info. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.